Hello, and uh, you are listening to It's Not Over. It's a ministry of Morningstar Baptist Church, and uh, uh, my name is Charles, and our host is Dr. Dan Farrell. How are you this evening? You didn't say Dr. Dan Undone. I did not. That's good, man. I purposely uh, was thinking about that. (laughs) (laughs) It's good to see you, Brother Charles, and uh, Jordan will be with us shortly. He is... um, um, tonight, he's teaching a class and giving a final exam in our Bible college. Don't forget those of you that know of a young man or young lady that's looking for a Bible college that uh, shoots straight and takes a flat-footed stand on the Word of God, uh, Antioch Baptist College, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I think classes start the 25th. Correct, yeah. And January 25th. So we would love for you to inquire, antiochbaptistcollege.net. And uh, the new classes should be on. You may want to check that, Charles, and see, but make sure all the classes are up. And i uh, got some neat classes next year. Hope that it will interest you. All right, we're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46. If you'll read uh, verse 8, I'll read verse 9 and 10, all right? Yes. Remember this, and show yourselves, men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there's none like me. Now, the rest talks about his providence. Now, that's interesting. Now, here's what I want to talk about, and it's going to surprise Brother Charles. But I want to talk to you. This is uh, many of you are listening or watching this on uh, Christmas Eve. And uh, I'm going to talk about something a little bit negative. It's going to come across negative, okay? But I I will spin it and bring about to where it has a, a, a positive application. And that is this. I, I would like to call on all Christians to just stop with the stupid Santa Claus stuff. And 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 you and listen, I don't mind on TV or on uh, radio here if you want to disagree. I'm not saying that you can't have fun with Santa Claus. I mean, you know, who doesn't like a fat old man with a red suit, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to have fun with... Because, like, I mean, you can have fun with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and whatever modern, you know, cartoons there are. You know, if you, I think I'd be careful about Disney. I think Disney has definitely gone left of the moral center. Yes. You know, they really have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Christians want to bury their head in the sand and say, well, you're just a pious gas bag. Nah, I, you don't hear me harping on it. I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, precious treasure, your kids, and you want them watching something that's pro homosexual, uh, like uh, Disney, is, and, it, and they're so subliminal in that thing. I'm surprised we don't have a homosexual Santa Claus, really, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's amazing. I'm glad they have a Mrs. Santa, you know, at least. But my point is, is that Christians, born-again Christians, know that the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, the triune God is the one that gives them power to get wealth. Gives you a job, gives you the health to maintain that job, and and has allowed you to live in a, a society that's still in the aftermath of the golden years. So you can go out and buy toys at Christmas time. I mean, Christmas time you'd know you'd never know there's a recession, right? So mm-hmm. you go out and buy these toys, and then you tell them it came from Santa. Are you kidding me? I don't know. I just don't like it. Now, did, were when you were growing up, were you? Were your parents very, um, you know, creative and getting you to believe that Santa brought the gifts? Uh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And I believed in Santa for a long, long time. And then, of course, when you finally realize and you're old yeah. enough, and it's typically, it's the school kids that kind of break it to you. Yeah. Right? I heard you were like 18 years old. Uh, yeah. 19, actually. Thank, <laughs> thanks for that. I didn't want anybody to know about that, but thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I was about, I don't know, I must have been about eight, maybe mm-hmm. nine. And I grew up with Jews, and the Jew, my Jewish friends, we would always fuss and fight about the resurrection of Christ mm-hmm. and Santa Claus. And they told me there was no Santa Claus. Wow. They did you a favor, I'm guessing. Well, I fought it, man. Yeah, I said, no. yes, there is. Mm-hmm. And I remember staying up late at night, watching for Santa, and my little imaginative mind, I could almost, in fact, I would see those planes with a, a red light, and I could have swore that was yeah, Rudolph, right. you know. And I would stay up late at night. In fact, my mom and dad, they, they must have thought it was cute. I'd stay at the top of the stairs. Man, I fell asleep on the stairs waiting for Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Now, did your parents do the, the milk and cookies and things like that? I think so, yeah. yeah. And, you know, my parents, those are the 1950s, 60s parents, right? And they didn't, I don't know. So anyway, but finally, 
the Jews, my Jewish friends finally convinced me there was no sin. But buddy, I, you know what I really fought? It was on the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know what my Jewish friends told me? They told me that the body of Jesus was stolen by the disciples. Which I think that's in Matthew twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. That it was a you know it was a plot. It was a lie, and then they still believe it today. Well, I fought that too. You know, okay, there's no Santa Claus. Who cares? But I, you're not gonna. So I'm glad I had that priority. But I believed in Santa Claus, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, to take your kid, uh, you know, to Macy's and have him sit on Santa's lap and get a nice little photo op. I mean, that's fun. Okay, I get it. So I'm not, you people out there, you're all mad because you think, oh, this guy here, he's just like all these. No, no, no. If you want to do that stuff, that's fine. Okay? Um, here's what bugs me. It's fantasy. It's fun. It's cartoon. It's just, it's it's not, I think if you're not careful, they compare Santa Claus to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Bible says that God's in the north. It says right here, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God. Mm. Now, I mean, there's only one direction left out there. A judge, a God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up the other. Um, now, God doesn't live in the North Pole, but in that empty place, due north, I think that's where heaven is. And by the way, I'm just reading one scripture. There's all kinds of scriptures, scriptures in the Bible that says that heaven is in the north. Mm -hmm. Okay, so heaven's in the north. Now, is Santa Claus omniscient? He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows just when they have been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Really? He's omniscient, huh? Mm -hmm. he, doesn't re he doesn't punish for wrongdoing, but he does withhold, I guess, toys. And this guy's om omnipresent, unless he only, you know, goes down, you know, Western culture's chimneys. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if he's supposed to go through all the chimneys in the yeah, British I Isles. I always wondered that as a kid. Like, huh? how did he get across the entire world so fast? I mean, yeah. France, mm -hmm. the Scandinavian countries. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Now, I guess he doesn't go to the Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, what about Australia? And what about New Zealand? And what about South Africa? Mm -hmm. I mean, they believe in Santa Claus. And what about all the countries in South America? And then, of course, North America and Alaska and Canada. I mean, the guy's omnipresent. Now, I don't know. They don't make it out like he's omnipotent. They'll probably work on that next. And he's got this flying sled, which God, the Bible says, I mean, the Bible talks about God is on not a sled, but it's a chariot. A chariot, yeah. And the angels, the cherubims mm -hmm. and the seraphims. And God has angels, and I guess Satan has all little nymphs running around, I guess little pointy-eared elves. What bothers me is this. <clears throat> These little kids whose parents are really foisting this upon them, they idolize Santa. Hmm. They love Santa. If you were to give, of course, our last election, 2008, it was a choice between Santa Claus and a businessman, you know, Obama and the, but. Mm -hmm. If you give these kids, most of these kids today, you give them a, a chance to sit on the lap of the Lord Jesus or to sit on the lap of Santa Claus, I dare say many of them would rather sit on Santa's lap. Thanks to stinking parents who, I'm talking about Christian parents now, mm -hmm. the lost parents, you know, they're, you know, they're not in, they're not in left field. They're not in the stadium, but I'm talking about Christian parents. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, what really got to me as I got older and I started having children of my own, we had we made a decision that we're not going to do Santa Claus. And people look weird upon us, but it's just that. I mean, when I was a kid and I realized that uh, Santa Claus was not real because, again, it was friends that were making fun of me, mm -hmm. uh, I, there was a lot of hype built up to that. right? And then, therefore, the way I think about it nowadays is, all right, we tell our kids that there's a God. That Jesus Christ is real, but yet when they're nine, ten years old, Santa Claus is not real. You know, when they're twelve, thirteen, God, well, God see, and Jesus isn't real. You're younger than me. Do you remember? Did that have a real negative backlash on your thinking in your mind, or do you remember? Um, no. I mean, I was just like, okay, no big deal. Okay. Right? All right. But but I still remember that. It's like why perpetrate the lie from my parents, and I love my parents, but I love my family, my grandmother, and everybody else. But why perpetrate the lie? And it's, it's just fun and game and cute. Mm -hmm. But why do that when there's more serious things out there? Well, believe it or not, that is the argument, by the way. 
yeah, yeah, I let go of it, no big deal. And mm -hmm. see, that's what they say, mm -hmm. that what's the big deal with lying to your kids? Well, first of all, lying is wrong. Correct. We all do it. All men are liars, but it's still wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's not defend it, okay? Yeah. Second is it says there's none like me. Mm -hmm. And then elsewhere in the, in, in the book of um, Isaiah, he says there's none beside me. And I'm, I'm sorry, Santa Claus, they've elevated, like I said, he's in the north, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's a giver of gifts. Uh, but again, just keeping with the, the, the stupidity of Santa Claus compared to Christ. Now again, see, if, if you were just to argue with me about Santa Claus as far as being a cartoon figure and having fun, hey man, let's have fun. But when you start making him the icon... And and kids are more excited about that than they mm -hmm. are the Lord. And that that bothers me, man. Yep. To me, that is verging on idolatry. Now, yep. let me say this. I'm gonna now. I told you I'd give you a flip spin. You know, you're in the no spin zone with uh, Dan O'Reilly. Um, let me say this. You can still have fun with Santa Claus. Let your kids know it's just having fun. You know, it's just a cartoon. Okay. Then what you do is. You get excited about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you give the Christmas story, if you want to call it that. And then you tell the kids, guess where all these presents will come from? They're going to come from daddy's wallet. And guess where daddy got the money? He got it from the Lord Jesus. And guess where Jesus lives? He lives in the north. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Jesus has got real angels at his beckoning command. Yeah. And you build that up. And let the kids know these gifts came from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then on Christmas morning, before you open gifts, okay, you say, okay, now let's all bow our heads and we're going to thank Jesus for giving us these gifts. Mm -hmm. And then you may even, this, this would be appropriate. Hey kids, uh, we may not be able to do this much longer. I don't know if you know it or not, but the, the White House is running our country down the road, and we're, our economy could go belly up. And so this is a wonderful time, and the Lord has allowed you to have. Now, let me give you another yeah. thing you can do. Ask your kids to pick out a gift, maybe one of their favorite ones, and give it to a child that's underprivileged. Mm -hmm. And say, the Lord Jesus wants us to minister now to precious children that don't have Yeah, that's nice a great gifts. idea. Yeah. You know, I did that. Uh, I don't know, maybe one or two years after it came to me. And what will happen is now your kids are getting excited about Jesus Christ. They give the glory to Jesus Christ. They learn the joy of giving. It just it, To me, it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And it gives glory to the Lord instead of having some stupid fat man compete with our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, well, you've been listening to It's Not Over, Dan Farrell with his tirade. Um, I hope, again, you don't think I'm too negative. I want you to enjoy Christmas. I want you to enjoy the thing. And if you want to dress up as a, a Santa Claus and the fake beard, but again, it's maybe it's not the issue of Santa Claus. It's the absence of the Lord getting the honor due unto him. Write us. Let us know what you think about the program. If you disagree, it's okay. You can slap me. But uh, it's MorningstarNetwork.org. MorningstarNetwork.org. There's a PayPal button. Man, we could use some funds to help propagate the gospel more effectively. And then if you want to check out our church webpage, MSBC, MSBC.com. And uh, we are excited about our Bible college starting January 25th. Trust that you'll look into that. And remember, we're on YouTube. We are on Facebook. And we're on sermonaudio.com slash it's not over. And so we would love for you to get involved in our ministry. Come to Cincinnati, Ohio, and we would like to get a shake of your hand and meet you face-to-face. Uh, -face. Well, Merry Christmas. I trust that even if, if uh, you max out your credit cards, uh, that you won't uh, get so materialistic and so greedy in reference to Christmas that you forget about your family. Forget about worshiping God. And by all means, go to church, especially if they teach and preach the Bible. And uh, love others. And find somebody that maybe does not have it as fortunate as you do. They don't have as many things. And minister, maybe invite them over for a meal. But I trust and pray that this Christmas season, you'll remember, it's supposed to commemorate the Lord Jesus Christ and not Santa Claus. <laughs>